We made it to the weekend. Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do my Friday Reads video in the typical style in which I do this where I film it on a Friday and then publish it on a Saturday. It's just the way I do things. It has been a crazy busy week which is the norm of late for me but at least the weather has taken a turn for the nice at least so far. We've been having wild fluctuations in temperature. It's been really cold and then it will start getting warm and then it will get really cold and then it will start get getting warm again. I am currently wearing shorts and a t-shirt with no flannel or hoodie on top. It feels good. Hopefully this is going to be the way things continue to go for a while because I'm enjoying it. And my husband has been doing a lot of gardening lately. We have a strawberry coming up that is turning red. Things are happening. It's really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to actual spring before we get to summer. I like the in-between seasons. I like fall and spring. Fall is my favorite. But I don't like the extreme cold and I don't like the extreme heat. So I love it when it's in-between. And I'm hoping I can enjoy a little bit of this before we get into the heat of summer. Anyway, none of that really means anything. I will say I did finish two books this week. One of them with a little bit of an asterisk. But we'll get to that when we do the actual Friday Reads portion of this video, which I usually do toward the end. A couple of things before we get to that. The first is, I want to acknowledge, I don't really like paying attention to or commenting on the amount of subscribers and things like that that I have. But I did cross a milestone this past week. I have more than 5,000 subscribers. And that is wild. I can't really wrap my head around it. It's just really bizarre. I, when I started my channel at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, I didn't really know what to expect at all. And the experience of having a channel has far surpassed anything I could have even imagined as like the best case scenario. Uh, I hit 3000 subscribers around this time last year. So in one year, I added 2,000 more, and I thought 3,000 was wild. So you can imagine how this is triggering my imposter syndrome. <laughs> and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it. I just really want to say thank you to anybody who has followed along or hit subscribe. Again, the imposter syndrome in me wants to be like, why? <laughs> but it's just, it's nice, and I've really enjoyed the sense of community. I started this channel because I really wanted an outlet to talk about books and find book-loving people who would do that with me. I always felt like a bit of a weirdo because sometimes things like Duck's Newberry Report would come out and I would feel weird because I'd be like, that sounds really interesting to me. But I found a community of other people who were just as excited to read Duck's Newberry Report when it was long listed for the Booker Prize as me. So thank you guys for making me feel at home and for making this a wonderful, mostly positive community. Uh, most of the comments I get on videos are positive and it might challenge a little bit, but you don't really see a whole lot of negative, And that means that this is a good community. It's not without problems. Any community has problems. But, you know, by and large, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following along. Thank you for commenting and taking the time to really make this a community. And like I said, a mostly positive one. That is wonderful. So when I hit 3,000 subscribers last summer, I did a 3K Q&A. And... There were a lot of questions, so I did multiple different parts. I can't remember how many different parts I have done, but they were also very time consuming to produce and edit and upload, and I kind of trailed off before I got to the end. So as a way of acknowledging 5K a year later, I feel like I don't want to do another Q&A because people were really interested in the first one, and then by and large, the, vid the views started trailing off precipitously as we went along and because they're so difficult to edit and put up and all of that stuff take a lot of time I don't want to do more Q&A videos for the questions but I do want to get to those last questions so I figure I will incorporate one or two questions so I get through all of the 3k Q&A questions and the one that I'm going to include here is from Larry Yance it's spelled Y-O-N-C-E. I hope I pronounced it correctly. My instinct is to pronounce it Yance, like Beyonce, because I'm a gay man and that's what we do. <laughs> but hopefully I pronounced it correctly. And Larry's question was, if you could have one 
one, all caps, superpower, what would it be and why? And that's a tough question because, of course, you want to go with something really glamorous like flying, invisibility, things like that. There are a lot of superpowers that would be fun, but I feel like the most practical one is probably Wolverine's healing ability because, obviously, you could hurt yourself and recover really quickly, but also his body heals itself so well that he, I believe he's much older than he looks. If I remember, it's been a long time since I followed comic books, but he ages very slowly, which of course would increase his lifespan. So for practical reasons, I'm going to say that. But of course, it would be fun to be able to fly or do any number of other things. So that's Larry's question. I'll save another one for next week and hopefully we'll get through the last ones. I think there were enough for one or two more videos. I just don't want to do it in one video. My life and work schedule has not been conducive to that, so we're not going to do it. But I really did want to say thank you to everybody, so thank you. The big thing that happened this week is, of course, mask requirements. The CDC is saying that if you are vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask in most circumstances. And this is, of course, a big change from the way we have been living for the last year plus in the pandemic. And one thing I really wanted to comment on about that is businesses, because I've heard from a lot of store owners, particularly as someone who lives in a state where a lot of people chose not to get vaccinated. So it's difficult to feel safe, even with these new regulations from the CDC. And I know a business owner here in Missoula, and I know business owners in Helena who have really struggled with what to do with this because, of course, you want to keep people safe. Masks are something that were designed to keep people safe, and it's something that we adopted over the past year to prevent the spread of illness. And part of that is to prevent spread of illness to you, but the other part is to prevent possible spread if you yourself are sick or carrying the illness. So I know these two business owners, and I'm sure many others, have been struggling with what this means for them and what they are now going to have to do. In Montana, we have a very conservative governor who's been taking down mandates that were put in place to protect people right and left. So it's put a lot of business owners in a position where it's a sort of a lose-lose situation. If they uphold mask requirements, they are going to get people who don't want to wear masks complaining. If they take away their mask requirement and make it a recommendation, they are going to be making people who want mask requirements to stay in place. Because especially, like I said, in a state where people by and large, chose not to get vaccinated, you wonder about public safety. So all of this to say, please be kind to your local businesses and your local business owners and the people who work in those stores because they are reacting to circumstances that are very much outside of their control and they're trying to do the best they can in most circumstances. And if there is a store that is loosening their mask requirement, please know they are probably doing the best that they can and give them the benefit of the doubt given the current CDC guidelines. And if it's a business that has not been requiring masks for a long time, you as a consumer have the ability to not shop at that store. And that's probably your best course of action. Don't go in and give people a hard time. The past year, everybody has had enough to deal with. So support your local businesses, follow the guidelines that they are putting in place. If they're still requiring masks, for all you know, they might have an at-risk employee or somebody who could not get vaccinated for whatever reason. So please listen to what they are saying and support your local businesses. They need you. It's been a really tough year for all of them. Another thing I wanted to comment on is the idea of TBRs. I've talked a lot since I started this channel about how I am really bad at TBRs because to me, it feels like when you call something to be read, it starts to feel like you are pressuring yourself to say like, I will get to this. So for me, TBRs are always just suggestions that you can pull from. So that bookish bear from Instagram, I will put a link to his profile in the description box down below, commented and said that he refers to them as hopefuls. And I really love that. I mentioned in my book haul revisit that I published earlier this week, I'll link that down below as well, that I think I'm going to adopt this, but I'm probably still officially going to refer to things as a TBR because I think that's the, the term that most people will understand in, say, the title of a video. But personally, I'm totally stealing that term and just referring to things as, as hopefuls, like a pile of hopefuls. And uh, that is how I'm going to be thinking about my June LGBTQ 
pile of hopefuls. And going forward, it's the language I'm going to adopt for myself. But in headlines, it will probably still refer to TBRs. And I really appreciate that difference because to me, it's a distinction that matters. As an aside, my husband and I were looking for something fun and quick to watch. And we found a movie called Breaking Fast on Hulu. It is a gay romance about a man who is following Ramadan. And the course of the flirtation is that he meets a man who helps him break his fast at the end of every day. And over the course of the month, they really get to know each other and spend time together. And it's actually a really sweet movie. And it spends a lot of time grappling with religion and what it means when one person is very religious and has faith and yet is gay, which is something that a lot of people would say counteracts their faith. It's just really interesting. It really gets into that and it gets into the idea of family and struggles with that, but it's also a fun gay romance that really appreciates musicals very deeply. So if you have Hulu, I would recommend checking that out. Let's get into the actual Friday reads with that. So like I said, I finished two books, one with an asterisk. Let's talk about the one that does not have an asterisk first. I listened to the audio of The Mountain Stories by Paul Yoon. Paul Yoon is some, an author I had not really heard of at all until I started doing research into my Pulitzer Prize predictions for this year. I'll link that video down below as well in the description box if you'd like to check it out. And then he popped up again when I did my video on the best Asian American authors and whether or not I have read them. I'll link that video down below as well. You can check out a lot down below in the description box. And he was on that list. Run Me to Earth was his newest book. It's the one that's in contention for the Pulitzer Prize this year, potentially. We don't really know what's going to win right now. And I looked to see what was available on audio because this is a API, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and I really wanted to read something that would fit in with that. I had been thinking that I would get to uh, Interior Chinatown, which is buried under a pile of books. I'm really disorganized today, and I didn't plan out a lot of what I was going to say, so hopefully it's going well. But I had been thinking about Interior Chinatown, but I wanted to make sure if I don't get to this that I still do something. So I checked what was available on audio, and this was. And I've also wanted to do more short stories this year since I read my beloved The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia last year. And it seemed like a good option. So I listened to it, and it was really good. It's a very tender story about a lot of lonely people, a lot of people dealing with grief and trauma from war. And... As such, it can be a little bit heavy, and maybe my mental state right now meant that I wanted to keep it at a bit of a remove for that. And yet, Paul Yoon is a really great writer. I deeply appreciate his abilities in that regard, and I am looking forward to reading more of his work, even though, like I said, I sort of intentionally wanted to keep myself at a remove from this book because it is sad, and it does feel lonely. And as such, the overall tone and feel of the book is an emotion that I perhaps don't really want right now. I'm trying to get into spring and that mindset and be like hopeful, but it's a really good book. And I'm glad that I got to experience some of his writing and I'm really looking forward to getting to Run Me to Earth at some point, hopefully in the near future. I will say one problem with the audio. By and large, it's a good audio production. It made it a little difficult to tell when one story was ending and another story was beginning. So sometimes I would get a little confused and then back up and think, oh, that was the beginning of a new story. Okay, I got it. So, and I wouldn't have had that problem, obviously, if I had been reading the physical book. But I'm still really glad that I did this and I'm looking forward to reading more Paul Yoon in the future. The other book that I finished was the one that I had started on NetGalley last week, which is Paradise Nevada by Dario Diofebe. And this is the one with an asterisk, as I said, and the reason for that is that I skimmed large portions of this book, including the ending. I got about halfway through and then I realized how long the book was. It's over 500 pages. And I was enjoying parts of it, but really just kind of losing interest as it was going along. So I skimmed a good portion of this book. On the story graph, I labeled this did not finish, but I, I did actually finish. But I feel like there's that asterisk, so I labeled it as did not finish. I know what happens in the end, but I skimmed a large portion of the way to get there and the ending itself. Here is what I'll say about this. This was one of my most anticipated books of 2021. And the reason for that was that this 
description of this plot, which is that it talks about the destruction of a fictional casino in Las Vegas and then flashes back to tell the intertwining stories of a couple of people who either work at that casino or gamble at that casino and how their lives led to this disaster. And that is something that would have really, really grabbed my interest, like circa 2000 to 2005. And truth be told, if we were in that time period and I read this book, I would have loved it. Like, early 20s, late teens me would have loved this book. But I'm 38, almost 39 now, so I'm in a very different place <laughs> in my life. And I appreciate a lot of the things that Dario Diofebi did, but I didn't love it. It feels like this book has a large throwback appeal. Like, it almost feels dated in a certain way, because it's sort of like a novel of ideas where the characters and their characterization doesn't necessarily matter. You're not going to get really deep characters at all. They're kind of thin. The characterization that they get comes from their circumstances and not from anything internal to them, necessarily. Which can be fine. It's much more about the circumstances around it. Dario Diofebe was somebody who used to be a professional gambler in Las Vegas, and you can tell. And it's much more about Las Vegas as a microcosm for America and the ways in which Vegas can embody the American dream. It's supposed to be a place where the playing field is even. Anybody can win, anybody can succeed, and yet it's not. And that part is really interesting. There's just a lot that goes into it, and it's definitely too long. It should not be as long as it is. It could be much shorter and maybe cut out at least one of the characters that are in the book and their narrative. There are a couple of different people who narrate. The structure is that you get uh, an introduction about the explosion in the casino, and then you are introduced to the first character in a flashback, then there's an interlude, and then another character, and then an interlude. There are a lot of interludes. And you don't even meet the final character that is one of the ones you're going to follow until about 150 pages in. And I even remember at that point, I was thinking to myself, Darren, what is this? There, another person? <laughs> We're just getting to them? And there's too much. You could definitely streamline a lot of this. Like that last character who is introduced is a Mormon from a Mormon family. And there's just a lot going on in the book, some of which does not have to be there. And it's all interesting. In a shorter, more concise book, it would have been pulled off much better. But as it went on, I was just losing interest. So that is why I ended up skimming my way to the end. And 21-year-old me would have loved it. 38, almost 39-year-old me got bored along the way. And that's a little unfortunate, but I'm glad I experienced it. In terms of what I'm doing now, so I have not picked up a print book. I'm going to decide what print book is going to follow, and I'll talk about that in a second. I already started my next audiobook, which came after The Mountain by Paul Yoon, and that is The Bad Muslim Discount. I have a copy of the print book as well, so I can hold it up for you, but I'm listening to this on audio, and this was another one of my most anticipated books of 2021. So far, I'm really enjoying it. The stories of the characters Anvar and Safwa are really interesting. The part I'm in right now is dealing with their childhood. So he grows up in Pakistan, and she is growing up in Baghdad. And they both ultimately, I believe, end up in America, and that's where their stories will converge. And so I'm at their childhood still. And it's really interesting the different ways they approach religion and family and the political background of the place where they are from. It's really interesting, and I'm enjoying this so far. I'm really eager to get further along, and I will tell you more about it as I do. My two choices to follow up on my print book are things that I got from the library. How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. This was also one of my most anticipated books of 2021, and it is on the shortlist for the Women's Prize. And... Jasper Jones by Craig Sylvie, which I learned about when I did my video on what are the best Australian novels and have I read them, which was a video I did for Aussie April. And people commented to say that this is sort of like Australia's To Kill a Mockingbird. Well, I was sold. <laughs> and because it was available at the library, I grabbed it. Somebody recommended Honeybee, which is a different book by Craig Sylvie, one that some people see as problematic because he is a cisgender man who wrote a transgender character. But I'm interested in it. It just does not seem to be available in the United States. 
So I'm working on it. In the meantime, I have this, and I haven't really decided which one I'm going to pick up next. My heart is intrigued by Jasper Jones, but there's a shorter hold on this one, so I feel like this is the one I should do if I'm going to be responsible about it. Being responsible is exhausting. So I'll decide and start one of these today. Probably this one, but I'm intrigued by this one, so we'll see what happens with that. And that's about it. That's everything for this Friday Reads video. Again, thank you. I am gobsmacked that I hit 5,000 subscribers. So if you follow along, thank you. If this is something you just stumbled into right now, thank you anyway. If you made it to this point, thank you. And if you want to follow along on whatever it is I do here, feel free. Regardless, I really appreciate anybody who spends any time on any of my videos <laughs> at any level. And as always, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.